Welcome back for a new season of Tying Sports, the platform that brings you the best coverage of Cal State Fullerton Athletics. I'm Eduardo Hernandez. And I'm Alex Esparza. So Eduardo, how has your New Year's been? Started off pretty good. It's been busy, but I expect that being the last semester of college. Now let's, get, let's find out some more news about Fullerton Athletics. Softball season is in full swing for the Titans as they competed in the Titan Classic over the weekend. They had a tough opponent in the season opener as they took on the Louisville Cardinals. Let's roll the highlights to see what the final outcome of the game was. Cal State Fullerton taking on Louisville to start the season 3-0. Start, start in the top of the third, Fullerton down by two, Alexa Neal makes a great snag at second base, checks the runner at first, still a two-run game. Louisville began to open the door as Maddie Newman hits to second base, but the throw to get the runner is wide. One run scores, Cardinals lead 3-0. Titans had some great defense later in the game. Sam Kennedy makes the backhanded grab, gets the throw on time, but Fullerton will go on to lose 9-0 in six innings. To close out the Titan Classic, Fullerton went on to beat Utah State 3-2 on Saturday and Pacific 8-0 on Sunday. The Titans now hold a record of 4-1. They will be traveling to Tucson, Arizona to play in the Hill & Brand Invitational. Moving on to the men's basketball team, who are having a great start to their conference season. Last Saturday, they went on the road to cruise by UC Riverside, defeating them 77-54. A major part of this victory is credited to the 30 points by Kyle Allman Jr., who is averaging 18.5 points this season. This is Allman Jr.'s second 30-point game in conference play. The last one being on January 19th on the road against Long Beach State. Their victory against the Highlanders gives them the season sweep and currently places them tied for second place in the Big West Conference. After a rocky 0-2 start, losing to Hawaii and UC Irvine respectively, the Titans have now won six of their last seven matches, improving their record to 6-3, and, and will like to continue this positive momentum next Wednesday when they face Long Beach State at home in the Orange Out game. While the men's team is starting to have positive inertia, the same cannot be said about the women's basketball team who lost their fifth consecutive game Saturday afternoon on the road against UC Irvine, 65-61. The Titans entered the fourth quarter with a 12-point lead but were outscored by 16 points in the fourth with their offense scoring only 7 points. Titan senior center Deja Smith came off the bench to score 14 points on 66.7% shooting from the field and from the free throw line. The Titans are shells of themselves after starting 3-1 in conference play and have fallen to 7th place in the Big West Conference. If you're looking for stories, rumors, and rants about professional sports, look no further because one of your favorite segments is back. Up next is Brandy and Ashling with What the Tusk. Take it away, ladies. Thank you and hello sports fans. Your girls B and A are back in 2019 to serve you the latest tea. And oh, I think it's piping hot today. What do you think, Ashling? Oh, I could rant about Roger Goodell all day, but it would be super irresponsible of me as a journalist. It would. But I still don't forgive him for kicking out my president from Super Bowl events, including the Super Bowl. Well, before we get into that, let's just get started with some breaking news. Monday morning, controversial NFL player Kareem Hunt was signed to the Cleveland Browns. He was released from the Chiefs in late 2018 after a video of him surfaced of him kicking and shoving a woman. Just to prove that I'm not exaggerating when I say pushing and kicking, here's the video again. He is still under investigation for that incident, but apparently, who cares? Because Hunt was signed to a one-year contract, and we know he apologized, and he's sorry for his actions, but there's no excuses. He should not be rewarded with a fresh start. And his Browns general manager, John Dorsey, said, and I quote, Given what we know about Kareem through our extensive research, we believe he deserves a second chance. But certainly with the understanding that he has to go through critical and essential steps to become a performing member of this organization, aside from what the NFL determines from their ongoing investigation. Now here's my thing. I've seen a lot of articles on ESPN saying that if the NFL does find him guilty, then he's going to be suspended, so we might not even see him suited up as a Browns. But why would a team want to sign someone who might not even get playing time? That seems very fishy to me. Well, it's funny when you say if they find him guilty because there is hard evidence. Yes. There's a surveillance video. It's clear enough to easily identify him. I don't understand why there's an investigation in the first place. Yeah, and I mean, in the past, it's always been he said, she said, you know, this happened in college or whatever. Mm -hmm. You never really got hard evidence of what actually happened. But with this, it's clear cut and clear as day. 
So there's no he said, she said. It's we saw, she saw, they saw, everybody saw. Yeah. Now, all right, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Another story came out over the weekend that has made us say yet again, Roger Goodell, what the tusk? Now, if you are an NFL fan, then you know who Bob Costas is, a.k.a. the face of football on NBC. Costas is known during most broadcasts that he's on to point out controversial issues surrounding the sport and organization that he's covering. And even when he covered the Olympics, he would touch other issues surrounding the other countries. And when ESPN asked why he cared so much when it was clear he couldn't satisfy everyone, Costas replied, I guess I find unfairness or untruth annoying. In November 2017, Costas spoke at a journalism symposium where he was criticized the safety of football. Now, I think football is one of the greatest sports in the world, but there is no denying it. The concussions are real, and so are the injuries. I mean, but what a guy, though. Like, that's the way you use your platform to get out on those controversial topics. But I guess Costas spoke the truth a little too loud, and Godfather Goodell was not happy about it. Costas was told via text, quote, you have crossed a line, end quote. And about a week later, he was pulled from the NBC Super Bowl broadcast and basically banned from broadcasting for the NFL. And earlier this year, Costas and NBC decided to end his contract early, ending his 40-year career with NBC. It's insane. He's a renowned broadcaster. He's amazing at what he does. And it's just really sad to see him go out this way. But as if we don't get enough football, just after the NFL season just ended, that's right, it is back with a whole new look, baby. It's called the Alliance of American Football, and they had just finished their opening weekend. The league was founded in early 2018 as its opening season finally just started, just a week after the Super Bowl. This is exactly what we need, though, year-round football. The AAF's idea is to be a developmental league and a compliment for the NFL. The first week ratings even beat out nationally televised NBA games like the Thunder Rockets game. The rules are super similar, though. Besides a shorter play clock and the players only get a three-year, non-guaranteed, $250,000 contracts. So I personally don't think that the guys will be in it for the money. <laughs> Definitely not. But this league is giving second chances to NFL busts like third overall pick Trent Richardson and first round pick Christian Hackenberg. Also former NFL coaches like Mike Singletary and Steve Spurrier. Finally, a league for the co they could have been. Uh, I, I remember that guy. He was pretty good. <laughs> I mean, I think there's a lot of positive things that the AAF provides, but I don't think that it's something to rely on as a full career, mm -hmm. as an athlete, considering their contracts are not even guaranteed. It is great, though, to have a professional coaching environment, to have a ton of NFL alumni to provide that NFL environment and give all that extra insight. Oh, definitely. Okay, but hear me out. What if Kaepernick makes his comeback in the AAF? He wouldn't make nearly as much money, but it would bring a lot of eyes and a lot of press to the AAF and a big old slap in Goodell's face. The drama? Oh, I live for that. Oh, you know we live mm -hmm. for that. Honestly, the NFL will never cease to amaze me because everyone is scared to sign Cap because he silently protested. <sighs> I mean, these are the issues surrounding the NFL right now, and until things change, people aren't going to stop talking about it, especially this day and age. You know. What yeah. a world. That's all your girls have for you this week. Make sure you're keeping up with what the Tusk is going on, Titans. We'll be back soon. Until then, we're going to send it over to Rita with this episode in case you missed it. Thank you, ladies, and hello, sports fans of Cal State Fullerton. I'm Rita Laveau, and I've got you covered with this week's In Case You Missed It. Let's take a look back at the past games from last week. Shooting things off with men's basketball, the team was on the road against UC Irvine in a rematch of the Big West Tournament Final. Despite the Titans' determination to maintain a close game, they ultimately fell to UC Irvine by the score of 60-53. to Dribbling across the court to women's basketball, the Titans put up a tough fight against Long Beach State and UC Riverside, but lost both games 59-53 and 62 to 59, respectfully. Now let's change the pace on over with the women's tennis team, where there was no love for them on the court against San Diego State, as the team lost 44 to two. Running over to the Colorado Invitational, where Fullerton's indoor track and field team competed in at the beginning of the month. The team had individuals setting personal records all over the place, but Aisha Ham took the cake finishing first in the women's high job. Want to continue supporting our Titans? Let's hand things over to Alyssa Frieder with the Titan Timeline for a preview on next week's activities. Alyssa?
Thank you, Rita. Heading into the final innings of our show, let's look at some upcoming games for Titan Sports with Titan Timeline. Starting with baseball, our Titans will be heading to Scottsdale, Arizona this weekend for a one-of-a-kind MLB collegiate tournament. This tournament features four great collegiate teams, including the University of Virginia, Vanderbilt, TCU, and of course, Cal State Fullerton. After the team will be heading back to campus Monday, February 18th with their home opener against the Washington Huskies. The softball team will also be heading to the Grand Canyon State, but will be playing in the Hill and Brand Invitational. The Titans will be competing amongst the some of the top teams, including Arizona, the University of Illinois at Chicago, New Mexico, and USF. Turning it over to basketball, the men's team will be facing off against the Matadors this Saturday at 7 p.m. They will be heading into this game winning their last six of seven games while sitting in third place in the Big West Conference. Women's basketball will also be playing Cal State Northridge this Saturday, but this is a very special game since it's Women Empowerment Day. This means all women get into the game for free, so feel free to drop by, ladies. Serving on to tennis, the women's team will be taking on Azusa Pacific this Wednesday and UC Davis on Sunday, having home court advantage for both games. Teeing off to men's golf, the Titans will be hanging out in Newport for the UCI Anteater Invitational on February 11th and 12th. The men's team must be really popular because the University of Wyoming has invited them to the Wyoming Desert Invitational in sunny Palm Desert from the 16th through the 18th. Well, we finally made it to the 18th hole with women's golf who are making their way to the Lone Star State for their Texas State Invitational on the 11th and 12th. Well, that's all I have for up and coming Titan games. I'm passing it back to Eduardo and Alex at the desk. Thanks, Alyssa. Well, guys, that's all we have for you today. Thank you for tuning in to our first episode of 2019. You can catch our past episodes and game highlight packages on our Titan Sports YouTube channel. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at CSUF Titan Sports and like us on Facebook to stay connected with us. On behalf of Titan Sports, I'm Alex Esparza. And I'm Eduardo Hernandez. Remember to keep those tusks up, Titans, and we'll see you guys next time.